And welcome back to WSHID's Focus on Film. I'm Jeremy Ronstad. Each week, we take a look at the movies that have touched our hearts and tickled our souls. Movies that did not get the kind of validation they so rightfully deserved at the Oscars. This week, we focus on Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell and the beautiful Halle Berry. Kurt Russell stars as a secretive man who is stuck on a plane with a bunch of terrorists who's got a big bomb that's going to go boom. But Kurt meets up with some commandos. They fly under the plane. They jump in between. They attach to the plane and then they take a elevator or something up into the plane. It's so exciting you can't even stand it. So much action I can't even talk about it. It literally tried to make my head explode just like the bomb. But here's what happens next. They shoot the bad guys. Everybody's dead. No more boom. No more bomb. But the plane has disintegrated. There's a big hole in the plane. People have flown out. There's a million people dead. Blood everywhere. Kurt uses the flight manual that Halle Berry's reading from to land the plane beautifully. Then this happens. Very end of the movie. This incredible line that brought me to tears. Clearly, they're upset about all the dead people, but what they really want to do is go get a cup of joe. So, here it is. Kurt Russell, Halle Berry, end of executive decision. One of my favorite movies. Here it is. Just listen. Gene, wait a minute. Could I buy you a cup of coffee? As long as you're not flying. Chokes me up every single time. I mean, let's worry about the dead people later, right? We don't have time for all that. We're in love. Let's go get some Joe. Okay, we'll be right back after this commercial break. On this episode of the commercial break, and it was a really cool night. I'm just explaining that uh, Mark didn't give me a cell phone number on the way out the door. Oh, I thought we were getting aww. close. I thought we were buddies. <laughs> and then now I feel like I want to text him and I can't. <laughs> That's probably why he didn't give you his number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think you think I could call Fallon and be like, hey, Fallon. Yeah, you could try. Yeah, I could try. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, probably not. Yeah. I don't think Mark needs my cell phone number. I don't think he it's, wants me to have his cell phone it's number. best to go out on a high note. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's best to go out on. I'll never see you again, Brian. <laughs> it's so nice to interact with you. I don't ever need to do it again. <laughs> it's probably how it's going to go. But one of the things that I wanted to do, and we just haven't gotten it right yet, is I wanted the ability to take phone calls. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have the ability to take phone calls now. We uh, let a few people know that we've uh, that we're here, that we're recording. Yeah. And so what I'd like to do is let's go to the phones and let's see if we can take a phone call. Let's do pick. The beep, 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 beep. Yeah, beep, beep, beep. Oh. <laughs> A hundred K, hundred thousand yeah. dollars for a finger. I like my fingers. Yeah, I would. Uh, I probably actually say a million because I think without one finger, we think we can lose one of the digits. I mean, does it go all the way down to the knuckle, or like could it be half? No, I think you all the all the way down to the knuckle. <laughs> like or just the tip. <laughs> could it be one of the useless fingers? Yes, it could be whatever finger you just choose. Just the tip. No, John, not just the tip. Lots of people lose the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people lose the tip. Lots of people have just the tip. That's a thing. The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. It's another episode of The Commercial Break! Touchdown, Brian! Yes. Hello, Chrissy Hoadley. Hello, Brian Green. Best to you, Chrissy Best Hoadley. Best to you, Brian. Best to you out there in the podcast. Okay, I'm yes. gonna dro- we're going to drop the Happy New Year. We and are? Yes, we're going to drop the Happy New Year. Okay. And I'll tell you why. It's because we're, we're, gonna say we're like nine Happy months holidays? In. Yeah, we'll say happy holidays. <laughs> happy, happy holidays. Because, you know, it's about that time of year exactly. when they're going to start putting out the Christmas ordinance. Yes. Any moment now. And there you go. So we're going to yes. say happy holidays. So let's start again. Okay. Ready? Uh, I'm Brian Green. This is Chrissy Holdley. And happy, happy holidays. holidays. Best to you, Chrissy. Best to you, Brian. And best to you out there in the podcast <laughs> universe. Thanks for joining us on another episode of The Commercial Break. And you know what I was thinking about the other day? I was thinking about, do you remember that that comedian Gallagher? Yes. The guy oh, yeah. who was who made a, in, entirely too much money running around the country smashing watermelons so in people's jumping faces. Jumping on trampolines. And yes. jumping on trampolines. What a fucking moron that guy was. <laughs> you know that I recently like went back and listened to an episode of him on Mark Maron's podcast. Oh, yeah. 
and he was saying some of the most racist, homophobic, xenophobic shit I've ever know. heard someone say out loud oh. and, and under the guise of a joke. But Mark was obviously, you know, extraordinarily uncomfortable. Yeah. And so Mark said, I don't think that's funny at all. I actually think you're just being a homophobe. It was really more about gays, right? He said, I actually think you're just being more of a homophobe. Yeah. And Gallagher walked out. He was like, fuck you and walked huh? out, out of the place. Oh, in this, that's the fucking yeah, you. that's the fucking you, Gallagher, you shithead ripoff comic. <laughs> but you know, all of us at some point in our childhood were like, "Wow, Gallagher!" You know, he had like yeah. twelve specials, twelve one-hour oh, yeah. specials on HBO and Comedy Central. He was like outrageous. But he was pissed on the on the Mark Maron episode. He was pissed because he was never given a late night talk show like David Letterman or Jay Leno. He was oh. pissed. He was like, I should have been on late night television. I should have had Dave Letterman's job. Oh. But they didn't give it to me because I was too busy out on the road. <laughs> and I'm really upset about that to this day. I should have made much more money. He was like a total fucking cock knocker. And, Weird. And at one point, didn't his brother like step up in frame? Wasn't there like some controversy where he was doing shows on one side of the country as Gallagher and then his brother was doing shows on the other side of the country <laughs> I don't know. I as missed also that. Gallagher? <laughs> I don't know. I he is that. like now all all positive vibes that I had about Gallagher in my childhood have completely gone. I mean, he's a one note act, right? He's just smashing yeah. stuff and, and, and people have to take it in the front, yeah. row, in the front row. He was never, he was a like the double dare, comedian. the Nickelodeon double dare version, adult version, kind of. Yeah. He was kind of like the adult. <laughs> he was kind of like the adult version. Of, he was more of a, of a Dane cook than a Dave Chappelle. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Poor Dane. I like Dane. Dane's a friend. Yeah. Of mine. Dane, me and Dane are buddies. Oh, you good. know, I'm famous now. Good. I get flown around yeah. and, and Mark Cuban's private jet mm-hmm. and all that stuff. www.tcbpodcast.com is where you go. You can read more about Chrissy and I. Whoa. Check out all the show notes. Listen to all the audio. Watch all the video. And you can connect with us either on youtube.com slash the commercial break or at the commercial break on Instagram. If you'd like to enter into our next contest, go to episode number 85 on youtube.com slash the commercial break. Watch all the way through. Look for the Easter eggs. Write the clues down. When I ask a question, you'll know the answer. And then you'll be entered in to win our next huge prize. Last time it was $500 in cash, gold dot gift cards. This time, well, we just have to wait and see. It's a surprise. It is. It's, it's a big a surprise. surprise. And I did want like to gold mention coins. gold, <laughs> Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Clubhouse, they have those they have those guys who make their own, you know, uh, altcoin. Money? Yeah, yeah. They essentially print money, and it's a big sham. It's a pump and dump scam, essentially, is what it is. Uh-huh. But maybe we'll give away, you know. One of our friends, uh, altcoins. You know, we have one of those friends, one of those podcast guys. You know what I'm talking about. I don't need to mention his name yeah. on there. Uh, I did want to also um, mention this, that Memfo Fest yes. 2021, as far as we know, is still a go. Yeah, it is. And Chrissy and I will be there. That's October mm-hmm. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Yes, am I right? correct. Okay. First, second, and third. It's in yep. Memphis, Tennessee. You can go They're going to gonna Mem- have some protocols in place, okay. similar to like what? Lollapalooza did. did, and I think Bonnaroo just put some stuff out yeah. and whatever. So, so as okay. safe as they can be. Uh, and so our intention right now is to be broadcasting or be recording shows live at MemfoFest as we see it right now. We'll let yeah. you know if that changes. MemfoFest.com is where you go to get some uh, tickets to the show. If you're going to be there, please let us know. And we will, of course, try and uh, we'll try and meet up with you. We'll yeah. try and do something out there. And actually, a few people have reached out and said, you know, I live in the area. I think I'll go. So nice. that's great news. Also, download the Fireside app because Chrissy and I are now recording We're live fire on starters. Fireside. We're Firesiders. Yes. Uh, and our good friend Maz Jaboni and Mark Cuban. They're all there hanging out with us 24 <laughs> hours a day. <laughs> I, I, never got Ma- I never got Mark's cell phone number. Oh. I don't know why. He, he neglected to yeah, give he it made, to you. He made a quick exit. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, see you later, man. <laughs> later, man. I'll check you out later. I don't know. Yeah. It was a quick exit. Yeah. You know, I think when you're, the, when you're like that rich and that famous – I'm, I don't want to get, I don't want to say too much, but I know there were security measures that were in place. Yeah. So you couldn't see them. It was clear that there were security measures in place that if anything that happened, makes sense. if anything happened, Mark could immediately communicate with somebody that would, I'm sure, just come barging in the door and, right. and take care of shit. Right. But those kind of guys, they do the Irish goodbye. They don't like walk around the room right. and say, Hey man, really nice to meet you. And I'll see you later. Yeah, I'm he leaving. just left. I'm yeah, talking, you just leave. I'm talking, of course, if you haven't listened to the episode yet, that uh, <laughs> I had an opportunity to have a, a be at a dinner with Mark Cuban and Fallon Fatemi and Maz Javroni from Fireside. And it was a really cool night. I'm just explaining that um, Mark didn't give me a cell phone number on the way out the door. Uh, I thought we were getting uh-huh. close. I thought we were buddies. <laughs> and then now I feel like I want to text him and I can't. <laughs> That's probably why he didn't give you his number. <laughs> 
Uh, do you think you think I could call Fallon and be like, "Hey, Fallon, you could try. <laughs> I could try. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, probably not. Yeah. I don't think Mark needs my cell phone number. I don't think he it's, wants me to have his cell phone it's number. Best to go out on a high note. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's best to go out on. I'll never see you again, Brian. It was so nice to interact with you. I don't ever need to do it again. <laughs> it's probably how it's going to go. So one of the things that I wanted to do over the last couple of months, we've been trying to figure it out. We've been trying our best to get the technology to work in here it's in the TCB podcast studios where many, many wires connect to nothing. Yes. And we le- we like it that way. We figure if they're not. Well, it's kind of like the Clark Griswold Christmas vacation cluster. Yes. The cluster string. You don't know how it turned on. So just right. leave just it the fuck leave, alone. Yeah. Just it. don't touch it. That's that's the one rule about this studio. Don't fucking touch it. And uh, And I work hard to keep my son away from all these wires. He's trained now. He knows how yes. to walk in between them and make sure he, he doesn't does. touch them. Yeah, he's good. At, he's he, good like that. He, he actually, is. he's actually a little podcaster in training, that kid. Yes. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to do, and we just haven't gotten it right yet, is I wanted the ability to take phone calls. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have the ability to take phone calls now. We've uh, let a few people know that, we've, uh, that we're here, that we're recording. Yeah. And so what I'd like to do is let's go to the phones and let's see if we can take a phone call. Let's do pick... Do the beep, beep, boop, boop. Yeah, beep, boop, boop. Oh. <laughs> I am really bad at cooking. That's an understatement. I eat mostly cereal because I can't fend for myself. Macaroni and cheese ends up burnt on the bottom of the pot. Pasta ends up smushy smashy. I'm just not good at cooking. You get the point. One of the reasons why I love HelloFresh and I have been using it for years is because they give you recipes with pictures. Pictures. That way, there's no way I can mess it up. Put pictures in front of me and I'm good. That's why I like HelloFresh. They're making it easy. They send every single ingredient in a box to your front door with an ever-revolving menu of delicious meals prepared by professional chefs. So I look like a hero when Astrid comes home and I've prepared this beautiful meal and I don't have to tell her about the pictures. Also, HelloFresh, during the pandemic, delivered 4 million free meals to those in need. And I think that's an incredible freaking thing to do. HelloFresh is a good company. They have a good service. They deliver good food straight to your front door. And you can save up to 28% by ordering your meals in a single box rather than going to the grocery store and buying more than you need. Those are all great reasons to use HelloFresh. The pictures mainly. But, you know, delivering free food to people in need and 28% on your grocery bill is not bad also. Another reason to order HelloFresh is they are offering the commercial break listeners up to 14 free meals if you do the following go to hellofresh.com slash tcb14 that's tcb14 make sure you use the promo code tcb14 or tcb14 either way there's a one and there's a four and there's a tcb you get what i'm telling you hellofresh.com slash tcb14 use the code tcb14 for up to 14 free meals thank you hellofresh i will use you as long as you keep the pictures How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to two hundred fifty thousand by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the twelve one twenty twenty three dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. Let's yes. pick up the phone on William from Brooklyn. William, you there? 
Yo, yo, okay. it's Will, Big Will, the champ, Brooklyn, New York. How y'all doing? What's, What's up, up, Will? Best to you, brother. Best to y'all. Listen, I'm going to come out in hot with a fun fact. Okay, go. All right. You know, uh, with Mark Cuban, you know that show Shark Tank, yes. right? We yeah, did. They yeah. bid to ownership of the company. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. If you look at the little fine, small print at the bottom of the screen, you find out that in order just to be on that show, they have to give ABC 2% of their company. I knew that. Oh, I knew yeah. that. And I actually thought it was much more. I actually thought it was 10%. But if it's 2%, regardless of whatever it is, I it did, might have changed. Yeah, yeah, I did know that. And here's an interesting. So I'll now I'll shoot a fun fact back at you. Originally sitting in, in Mark Cuban's seat for the first season was a gentleman named Kevin Harrington, who was a um, like a late night infomercial guy. That's what he was famous for. He owned one oh. of those companies that did infomercials. And mm-hmm. he was very successful doing this, like made you know hundreds of millions of dollars doing this. He was the first guy. Now, admittedly, his personality was not extremely strong on camera. And so he didn't spend a lot of time on camera because he wasn't one of those guys that was interesting to listen to. Yeah. But he did make a few deals. And then on season number two, they started bringing in other people. I think Cuban came in season number four or something like that. Kevin Harrington, I actually worked for Kevin Harrington for a period of time, sussing out new deals really? for him that then I would send his way. I worked with a patent attorney who worked with Kevin personally, and we would look at new opportunities. And then if, if we thought it was interesting, we would send it uh, Kevin's way. Never nothing ever came of it because you know people have really <laughs> stupid ideas one guy had a cookie <laughs> dipper he called it the, the cookie i forget what he called it. i'm not going to say the actual <laughs> name on there but it was just imagine this it was a straw that had a holder for a cookie and so you could dip the cookie in the milk while you were drinking the milk oh. through a straw and then you could pick it up and eat it and he thought this was the billion dollar idea oh, and wow. i thought clearly this is horseshit <laughs> like I mean, yeah tape a cookie to your straw i don't know like who needs that who needs that who really needs that no one needs it that, the I, cookie I, dipper sounds like one of cookie monster sexual positions <laughs> hey listen don't talk about don't, don't talk about cookie monster like that's that. right there, you know there's cookie monster porn out there will you oh you god know don't there get is. brian started yeah don't William. get me started on the porn. Chris, oh, I, oh all the fan fiction in the world is out there for any kind of genre you want. If you like it, somebody else is into yes. it. It's it for sure, without a doubt. So, William, tell us what's going on. How can we help? How can we hear a TCB uh, podcast? How can we help you? What What do you got in store for us? What, what What question can we answer for you? So, I started listening a couple of months ago. Uh, I know you like to find out how people find you guys. Yep. So, for me, I listen on this uh, this app called Podbean. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so Podbean has these little things at the top. Uh, that give you suggestions that refresh every week or so. Yep. And you guys wanted the suggestions. Go. Cool. Cool. So Podbean. ever since then, I've been listening. And uh, I was just curious since I, you know, it's way too much time to jump back in time and watch everything from the past. So I was just curious. I know there was, uh, a, you started as like a real estate advice thing or something like that. Yep. Yeah. But like, I was curious what was it was it because of covid was it but were you i know you had a radio career were you shock jocks like obi and anthony like <laughs> and you got fired and moved on to better things we like i don't know the story <laughs> we got fired well first of all don't even waste your time going back to those old episodes because yeah. they are shitty my friend i will let you know second of all thanks to podbean for the shout out that's mm-hmm. really great news podbean is actually uh, i know the people over there who ran them i met them over at the podcast movement which, uh, which is where i met mark so thanks podbean uh So short answer is the following. Chrissy and I did work in radio and that's how we met each other. But But we we weren't on air. Yeah, we weren't on air. We worked Uh for the company in the on the business department. So I was uh, an executive over there. Chrissy was a like a a, a national salesperson over there. And that's how we met. We worked in the same office. And we and, just got to be best yeah, friends. Yeah, we just got to be best friends. We Really, yeah. we started drinking together, and it was all downhill <laughs> from there. We were just telling, on the episode we just recorded, we were telling the story about how, on multiple occasions, we either got kicked out, dragged out, <laughs> <laughs> or rolled out <laughs> of multiple places, because radio is a cesspool of alcoholics and drug yeah. addicts, just like, just like you know, the restaurant business. So we met each other then many years ago. We're going probably on 15 years ago. Yeah, then. 2007. I did actually manage to get myself on air at Clear Channel for yes. a short period of time, but we are talking about <laughs> overnights on what they call a small stick, which probably reached no more than 30,000. You know, a big the stick legend. in Atlanta, the legend. <laughs> WWW, uh, what was it? It played like uh, old yeah. country. 
six seven, the legend. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what the guy said, I begged these people yes. to be on air. I begged the radio, the program director, to be on air, and he was like, "You can't. You work in the business office. I can't let you do that because if you fuck up your job because you're trying to be an on air personality, <laughs> right? It's it comes it looks bad on me. I would let you do that. Finally, after multiple uh, alcoholic <laughs> beverages one night, he said, "Okay, here's the deal." You can be on from one or two to five in the morning. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually, uh, I wasn't live. I would re-record, I would pre-record it. But he said, you can be on from two to five. There's probably only 10 people that are ever going to hear you. And <laughs> if I get one fucking word back about you on this radio station, <laughs> if one person says one thing, I'm t- yanking you off so fast, your head is going to spin. And if you start fucking up your day job, your head is going to spin. Like, don't, he basically said, don't become a problem. I don't want to hear about yeah. it. I want to pretend like I never said yes. I just want to get you off my back. Yeah. And <laughs> the guy was basically, so here's the story. So I walk, I don't know how to work a radio station. This radio station is a huge radio studio with hundreds of buttons oh, yeah. and computers and all this other stuff. So William, so I go in there and the guy says, <laughs> he, he hooks me up with a guy to train me how to do this. Guy's name is Lance. Lance, mm-hmm. very nice guy teaches me how to work the radio station. He says, here's how you record. Here's how you go live. Here's Mm -hmm. how you pick up on phone calls. Here's how Mm -hmm. you do the music, all this other stuff. And he says, there's one rule and one rule only. Three minutes of talk an hour. Three minutes. How you choose to break up those minutes, I don't care. But there's three minutes of total talk an hour. I don't want to hear about it. Like, don't ever go over three minutes. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's the rule. That's just the rule you never break. And he left me alone. He he literally gave me one day of training. And then the next day I was in the studio recording for 96.7 The Legend to maybe (laughs) 30,000 people at a time in a city of 12 million. So I started with my three, a little good boy. I started with my three minutes. And within two months... I was doing almost 40 minutes of talking in an hour. Yes. I was doing like yep. a three hour show in four hours. And that I was, was the Obi and Anthony method. They were, they would always say, you know, we would just not listen to them and it would work out because the ratings would go up. That's, yeah. That, and the ratings went up. Mm-hmm. Unbelievably. They this did. overnights in the legend, all the stars started showing up in what's called the book yeah. in the top, you know, 40 or whatever, <laughs> whether it's 50 radio stations in Atlanta, legend was always last, but all of a sudden it was in the top 40. And then, you know, uh, but no one was paying attention. No one ever listened to me from the radio station. I then had Lance came in one day and he says, Hey, meet Cam. Cam wants to be on the radio. He's going to do the couple hours after you in the mornings. So teach him how to do this. So essentially, I became the the the, te- the student became Somehow the teacher. You met Cam? And you franchised yourself I, out. That's right. Okay. And so Cam. Yeah, is that when, how you met Cam? That's how I met I Cam. Didn't realize that. And okay. when Cam got on the radio, he couldn't talk. He was like, uh, uh, he just couldn't say anything. He was so nervous to get it behind the microphone. He had never heard his voice behind the microphone. He was so nervous. Poor guy was so shy. So I suggested, why don't you and I, we'll do a little talking back and forth on my show, and then that'll make you comfortable behind the microphone. Then you can go off and do your own thing. Well, the rest is history, as Cam and I went on to do three hours of talk in the four-hour block that I had and and it all was shits and giggles until we one night we made joke about Sarah Palin's daughter. It wasn't a bad no. joke. It wasn't like a rude joke. We didn't use any crass words, but this was a country this is a classic country station in South Atlanta. And making fun of Sarah Palin at the time was like, you know, it was not the thing to do. And we caused a holy shitstorm inside ruckus. of that clear to a ruckus to me. And Levels do not matter in our t- in our current atmosphere. It's either <laughs> zero or ten. Yeah. Zero or a hundred, my friend. And that guy yanked us off air so fast. He actually yanked Cam off air, told me to shut the fuck up and do my three minutes. <laughs> and uh, within a month, we were right back to it. He let Cam back on air, right back to it. But it all ended when the Clear Channel got bought by a private equity company. Mm-hmm. They laid off tens of thousands of people. And, um, and I wasn't one of them, but there were other people who had family members at the time. I didn't have any, I didn't have anybody to take care of but myself. So I took a severance package. So a guy next door to me could, could, could survive the, the, um, the layoffs. That's yeah. how that happened. That's how Chrissy and I met. And Chrissy did a couple of times come I on was a air. Guest. Yeah. She yeah. was a guest on our little shitty rinky dink, uh, radio <laughs> program in the middle of the night. So there and you go. And that was like 2009. Now fast forward to 2020. 20, yeah. And I got asked by a friend she said you should do a radio show or a a podcast it's like a radio show but our friend allison and i had been thinking about it for years actually my wife had told me i should do it and she was really pushing me to do a a video podcast like a vodcast on youtube but no one wants to look at my ugly fucking mug i mean so (laughs) i i 
I grabbed Chrissy. I said, hey, Chrissy, why don't you just do the first two episodes with me? Yeah. That's all I'm asking. Just do the first two episodes with me. And the rest is history, actually. It By is. episode number two, we were hooked. <laughs> and here we are almost 100 episodes later. I know. It's crazy. And hundreds of thousands of listeners. It's just like, yeah. William, it's been an insane, insane ride uh, for the two of us. But we're good friends. We go way back. And in 2020, the pandemic didn't... We, did, we were going to do the podcast anyway. The pandemic kind of was hitting us as we were starting our first episode. It gave episodes. us more of time it to gave do us more time to develop mm-hmm. content and stuff like that. Yep. Mm. And so Been now coming. I, yeah. And so now I ask you a question, William, what makes you enjoy the program so much? Uh, you know, uh, it, obviously you guys are funny and I started, uh, by listening around the time that you guys had the, um, the, the masks, uh, <laughs> the, the, the masking. Oh yeah. yeah. And oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Now that you know you guys uh, have these little odd things that you talk about, it's kind of in my wheelhouse because ah. I'm that guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I'm also a guy that I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and and I enjoy it almost better than watching TV sometimes. Like, like I guess I've referenced Dopey and Anthony. I used to listen to a lot of Radio Ron and Fez and stuff like that. I wanted to be on myself. I actually, I I, I think you can hear I have a pretty decent voice. Yeah, but you do. I never. I never had anybody to like push me in that direction. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's just, just the general interests that you guys talk about. And, and, uh, I also like the fact that Opie and Anthony used to talk about that. I, I, I don't know if you guys like him or Howard better or if there's any, and I, uh, whatever. You know, I, I listen to Howard simply because ho- I can listen to Howard and right, I know right. Opie, and, Opie or Anthony or both of them at one point were on Serious, but the only reason yeah, why no, I, now, it, now yeah. it's a shit show with them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they used to they used to make fun of the uh the the woman that used to be in the room and they they would say you know because they'd always be like oh don't say that and and chrissy's not like that and that's refreshing you know what i'm saying <laughs> she's she she's saying fucking and going with it you know what i'm saying and i, I emailed yeah. brian and had said that i wish you would talk more you know when i sent them my ideas for the shows yeah oh, you know, well cool. listen i think it's a i think it's great Thank we appreciate you. you listening and and um and we and we appreciate you know, you being here today. Yeah. So I actually was going to, we're recording an episode. So, uh, and you know that. So I thought I was going to play a game with Chrissy, but do you want to jump in on the game? Yeah, it's all okay, good. Let's, let's do, it. do this. Here's the game that I came up with. Cause you know, every Your once games. in a while we like to play a game, right? Yes. I know my games, you hate them. <laughs> they <laughs> my, make me nervous. I know my wife is like, it's so obvious that Chrissy hates these games. I don't know why you play them. She's like, she never wants to answer the questions. And it's so true. Chrissy's answer is always, well, what do you think? <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> I don't want to answer that, but we're, I'm going to push you a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Okay. okay? All right. I'm going to, I'll try and stay away from anything that I think might upset you or family it's members. It's not upsetting. It's, it's not upsetting. Just- I, I think that I th- here's my opinion, right? You want my opinion? <laughs> my opinion is I think you feel like maybe this would upset when Jeff. When you're or somebody asking you know. me if I'd rather fuck an older guy or a younger midget, then <laughs> I mean, I'll answer Chrissy, it. I'll, I'll take the bullet I'll for you. I'll take the midget. It. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'll answer it. But. but you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. My, I guess I don't. I don't really consider my wife, and I don't. I'm not really considerate, so I don't worry about it too much. Okay, let's let's play a little game. This game is called How Many Zeros. Are you ready for this? Yes. I think How Many Zeros is it? Is William? It? Are you ready? Will? Yeah. Will, are you ready? Okay. Let's play a little. Born game. Born ready, baby. Born ready. Here we go. All right. Now, how many zeros is played like this? How many zeros would it take you to do whatever I'm about to ask? All right. And there's a series of questions, a range of questions. It could be, would you do something? It could be, would you sleep with someone? You know, you get it, right? Okay. I'm going to ask a question. You tell me how many zeros, dollar-wise, would it take you to do the following? <laughs> okay, and we'll ask it of you, we'll ask it of Will, and then I'll give my opinion, too. All right, let's start off easy. Okay. How many dollars, how many zeros would it take for you to eat a live fish? Oh, uh, I'm going to go with like a thousand. A thousand, so three zeros. Yes. Okay. Three zeros. So, so three zeros. Will to eat a live fish, something that's alive and squiggling. I'll go five thousand. Because she goes five thousand. So right. he's the three zeros also. So let's, yeah, I like sushi. Okay. So that's really close. I, I have actually had live <laughs> yeah, octopus, live baby octopus, oh. for, and I paid. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I was the one who paid. Okay. You ever watch bizarre foods with Andrews and Marley? Oh, yeah. You ever see that of course. crap yes. that he does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And they, I, I was horrified as I watched a, a, a live lobster being, uh, you know, chopped up and used as a serving plate. It was oh. whoa. 
Oh, crazy, crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I can never watch it again after yeah. that. No, lobsters have feelings. They cry, don't they? Oh, or some shit like that? I think uh, like it's that. gas. I think it's gas pressure that goes between the... The, the shell and the, the bee. Shell, yeah, yeah, the shell. Yeah, I think uh, that's a myth on the crying. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, Either yeah, way, they're, they're actually the same species as cockroaches, so I will never touch them. Oh, I don't like cockroaches yeah, at all. It's, it's the one Hate insect it. that I cannot deal with, and if I see them in the house, I will literally buy poison that's that is bad for my children, my dogs, and myself, and spray it all around. Yeah. I, I well, there's you. the question. How many zeros see the cockroach? Oh, oh Will uh, coming in. I would say that you probably have to get me in the... There would probably have to be four zeros behind it. It would probably have to be like in the ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 range to eat a, a live cockroach. Okay. What about you? I mean, you don't <laughs> like cockroaches either. You will. How many, how many oh, zeros? I, I'd probably have to go to the million. Oh, wow. Yeah, me too, Will. Bucks, huh? I'm the I'm type lying. of guy, I'm a big guy, and if I see a, a big, like, giant cockroach, I will run away screaming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, me too. I don't run away screaming, but I get nervous around it. I'm like, yeah. I start jumping around, and I, like, I come in, and I, I make a plan. I walk outside the room. I make a plan. I draw it out. I'm oh, going to come in too. from the left. I'm going to I'm gonna blindside him on I the right. I yeah. negotiated with one one time. Did you please like, leave? <laughs> yes. I was, like, I was like, if you leave, just leave, and I'll pretend like I never saw you. Just- <laughs> if you go, I'll go. <laughs> If you walk away, I'll and walk away. And then I drink a bottle of wine. Yeah, you yeah. start dedicating songs to it and singing it. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, man, that is so gross. Okay, here's the next question. Okay. How many zeros for you, and I'll give this one to Will first. I, Will, how many zeros for you to eat roadkill? Squirrel, raccoon, uh, something, something you see on the side of the road. Uh, is it cooked? Yeah, that's a good question. Of course. Yeah, I'll say it's yes, it's cooked. Uh, but it's course. roadkill. Right, came off the road. <laughs> I'm trash. I'll take uh, at least a hundred. Oh, wow. A hundred. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Kind of cooked food is cooked food. Yeah, if it's not diseased, it's whatever. Yeah, it's true. But, you know, usually roadkill is of some rodent variety that you wouldn't eat, like a squirrel. But I do know that, by the way, I do know lots of people eat squirrel. And, yeah. And, and when I was in Miami, uh, just or possum when I was in, too, I at think possum too. Eat. When I was in uh, Miami, when I was in Naples a couple of weeks ago, there were raccoons that came up to the car and were like greeting us. They were like right where you are, and they were saying hello. They were putting their hands up like this. <laughs> My son food. wanted to play with it, and I was like, "Get the fuck away from that thing!" No, could have yeah. a raccoon will fuck your life up. Oh yeah, yeah, they certainly will. But I know other people a have them as claws. pets. Yeah. So how many zeros for you to eat roadkill? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go with. 500, so two zeros. Okay, 500. So. All right, okay, that's not that bad. Okay, let's get started. Actually, I, I, have some, I have some of this in, in actual practice. Uh, I have a buddy. I'm, I'm actually a competitive eater. I haven't mentioned it yet. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, yeah. I, wow. I do, uh, I do I'm what I would call semi-retired. I don't really practice anymore. But uh, I have a buddy of mine that also does that, and he did a fried cicada eating contest. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's been the rage because yeah. this year was when the yeah. cicadas came out. Yeah. Uh, Listen. And he said that people were grabbing them one by one like they were retching, and he said he was just scooping them up by the handful. He won like like 10 to 100 or something <laughs> like wow. that. Wow. Oh. They're supposed to not taste that bad. So let me, derail the, let me derail this for one second. I just have two questions about competitive eating. Yeah. Right How sick do you get after you competitive eat like that? Like how how ill is your stomach after you eat you know a hundred hot dogs or whatever it is? It depends on the length of the contest. If you're going like a two minute contest, it's still going to be more than you or her would eat, yeah. but it's still fine for us. Yeah. And m- most competitive eaters will just take like a ten minute contest to the stomach and 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 let it go naturally. Wow. But some of us also regurgitate, and some yeah. go as far as to use epicoc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and the stuff that uh, makes you sick. Yeah, and if you have a particularly meaty contest, you're definitely getting the meat sweats at night. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. I just can't imagine. And they're that. horrific. They're, yeah. It could be zero degrees outside, and you're just hot and sweat and greasy. Oh, that make, that just makes me uncomfortable just thinking about it. Because I know <laughs> at my age, when I eat a steak, yeah. it makes me sick, like physically sick. I have to be careful because I'm so hungry, and I love steak, and I'll eat it. And then oh, I'll, like, I love and steak. half an hour later, I'll be like, oh, my God, what did I do to myself? And then I watch these guys that are eating 77 hot dogs in a sitting, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. There's uh, actually a, a challenge out in Texas in this town called Armarillo, and uh, it's a famous steak that all the competitive eaters have gone to. The 79er, the 76 yeah, 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 something like that. I think it might be even 80 or something. Yeah, something like that. Oh my and God. they'll they'll sit there and film you the whole thing to see if you do it or not, and then they post your name and on the video. And there's like a record for the fastest time. I think no, somebody thanks. did it in like a couple of minutes. Yeah, no thanks. 
Not for me. That's a, that's a different question. How, how many hot dogs would you eat? 77 hot dogs. Okay, here's one. I got one. Ready? We're going to get a little bit. We're gonna, now we're going to get a little bit tougher. Oh, okay. okay? Level two? Yes, level two. <laughs> Are we leveled up? <laughs> yeah, it's, we're like Round Mike, two. Round two. Mike Fight. Tyson's punch out. Okay, how, how many zeros to run naked through the mall? To run naked through the mall. To run naked through the mall. Or walk naked through the mall, whatever you choose. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be naked in the mall. See, I have caveats, though. The, can it be a mall that's not close to home? <laughs> yes, it can be a mall where you don't know anybody. Okay. Okay, then, yeah. I, I'm easy on that, then. Just give me 100 bucks. I'll do it. Wow. <laughs> We're going to have nice. to get Will down here to Atlanta and film some content. <laughs> All right, that's a little too close. Let's make it a thousand. Okay, a thousand. All right, fair enough. I'll put you up at the Hyatt Inn. I'm going to go with a thousand, too. Go with that's thousand? too close to a reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it. Yeah, I would think I would do it for a thousand. Yeah. I think a for a thousand, thousand, I would do it. Yeah. If, if I didn't have to, like, stand there and have conversations with people, I could right, just, like, you just run walk. in and run out. You just yeah, walk yeah. straight Just through. walk straight. Fast and walk. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's one. <laughs> Fast walk. Turning us walking fast, yes. naked through the or mall, or prancing like one of that, like that lady who does the prancer size. <laughs> just, you can just run around calling yourself Frank the Tank. <laughs> I would just like make my scrundle sack available to anyone who was looking. Okay, all right. Um, how many zeros to cut off a finger? Oh, cut off a finger. You had to cut off your own finger. I have to cut off my own finger. You have to cut off Will your own finger. Will has to cut off his own finger. Yes, we're not anesthetized here. You just Ooh, have to. Oh, I got to do. Oh, ow, That's ow. Sober? Just uh, losing a finger is easy. Yeah, yeah, losing a finger, you don't, you know, it's just, you have no choice about it. It just goes. <laughs> yeah. But cutting it off, you have to think about yeah. it, you have to attack it, and you have to do it, right? Okay. okay. And so I will say yes, that you are. No, actually, you know what? You are, you can be in whatever state of inebriation you'd like. Okay. So how many zeros? Cut off a finger. I'm going to go with 100K. 100K. $100,000 yeah. for a finger. I like my fingers. Yeah, I would. Uh, I probably actually say a million because I think without one finger, we think we can lose one of the digits. I mean, does it go all the way down to the knuckle? Or like, could it be half? No, I think you all go all the way down to the knuckle. <laughs> like, or just the tip. <laughs> can it be one of the useless fingers? Yes, it can be whatever finger you choose. Just the tip. No, John, not just the tip. Lots of people <laughs> lose the tip. <laughs> Lots of people lose the tip. <laughs> Lots of people have just the tip. That's a thing. So many problems have been caused by just the tip. Just the tip. I'm Catholic. Just the tip is like, <laughs> that's a way of living for us. Okay. Uh, all right. How many zeros, Will, to lose a finger? I would probably go million, but I'd have to have like a clean cleaver chop. Yeah, me too. I would have to. Yeah, yeah I couldn't do quick. it saw style. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, you'd no, have no, to be no. quick. Boom. Yeah. I, I I say you can you could lose it in whatever man you could take it off in whatever manner you choose, and you can have whatever state of inebriation. I'm with Will. I go a million dollars because mm, I think gosh, losing I was a finger. Off easy here. Yeah, you were 100K. like a hundred thousand dollars. I think I could probably come up with that. That'd be a good on demand special. <laughs> Chrissy loses a finger. <laughs> You never. I have a little hey, I, I, I do so much cooking that I'm cutting my fingers all the time and always having to bandage them. So if it wasn't there anymore, then well, you like, probably good wouldn't riddance. know it. Okay, uh, <laughs> take a dream vacation with your worst enemy, with your worst enemy, the, the person in this world that you just despise with a passion. That's relative, though, because I could, I don't have the same hate for the kids that I did in high school. Yep. But if you got me in that moment, I'd want that person. To be the, the the most hated person, you understand? I, have, yeah, yeah. I hate somebody more now, but I had that same hate twenty years ago for someone else. Okay, so uh, let's just say it has that, to be relative. Yeah, okay, so the huh. person that you hate now, now the most, like I'm I'm saying, I'm going to give you your dream vacation. I want you to travel all across Europe or wherever. Go to Thailand. How long is this vacation? I'll just say two weeks. Two week vacation. You're going to have to stay in the same hotel room. You have to eat at the same places. You're going to have to go on the same adventures. You're basically chained to this person, but you're going to get to go on your dream vacation. And I'm going to pay you to do it. How many zeros? I mean, I'm going to go with. I'm going again with 100k. Okay, 100k. I think that sounds about right. I think. I 100K. mean, because I would try and use it as an opportunity to, for healing. For healing. <laughs> 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 I'd use it an opportunity uh, for a good podcast episode. Yeah, I'd be like, you gotta, I'm taking you gotta my turn recorder. it into something. Yeah. How many, okay, Will, how many zeros to take your worst enemy on a dream vacation? I wouldn't need a lot. I'll make it one zero, ten dollars. It's easy for me. Woo! One zero, ten dollars. Right. Yeah, I don't, listen, wow. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a current 
era hippie. I, I'm like a peace and love guy. Nobody really bothers me. Okay. So my me my worst enemy is a neighbor of mine that just gives me the stink guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I could deal with the stink guy for nothing yeah. for a free vacation. Yeah, Fair enough. True. Okay. We're we're kind of new age hippies too. Yeah. My wife calls me a militant hippie. That's what she says. I mean. <laughs> militant. Or, okay. a, or a no melanin hippie. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> well, I have plenty of melanin because that tanning bed puts it right in me. All right. Okay. <laughs> yes, Brian. <laughs> Still goes to a tanning bed. I don't go to a tanning bed. I the tanning bed comes to me. Uh-huh. Okay, all right. Oh God, <laughs> remember the tanning mom? Oh yeah, tan yes. mom. Oh, tan mom was the best. Ooh. She was great. You gotta follow up on that story. That'd be oh, a good episode. Yeah, I, we do I, need to do some follow ups. Yeah, Brian. we'll follow up on that. Okay, so uh, giving us uh, give a speech in front of three thousand strangers on a subject you know little about. Oh. Okay, so not only are you giving a speech in front of a new crowd that you know nobody in the audience. But you have to give it on the topic you know little about, not your area of expertise. So it feels doing, like impractical jokers now. Yeah, I know. Seriously, like this. But uh, you know, I'm trying to. Th- I was trying to think of the fears that kind of we all have of something, and obviously, public speaking. No, they me, always put them in, in cringy situations. Yeah. So that's definitely one of them that you're like. But see, for me, I'm not a person that gets embarrassed easily like okay. that. So that's light work for me. I, I I would just look stupid, and that's okay. I'm, I look stupid on a daily basis. <laughs> me too. I don't mind looking like an idiot. That's my kind of my public persona. <laughs> I would say, if I had to answer first, I would say if you gave me probably a thousand dollars, yeah, I would go give a speech because I think I could talk through you pretty much any could. subject, regardless <laughs> of whether or not I knew about it. You could yeah. probably say uh, super cool, you know, like yeah. um, supercomputers or organic supercomputers, and I could probably go up there and make shit up. And you definitely, you know, could. even if everybody else was I, like, "That's bullshit." <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I could do what you do, and that's why you're the lead. Yeah, on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's got to be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's um, got to look like an idiot. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would say a thousand dollars. I'd give it a shot. I don't care if I look stupid either, especially if people okay. didn't know. All you right, said it's people you don't know. People you don't know. And Nobody. If it was you people know. I knew, if it was three thousand of the people that I knew. You'd feel more pressure. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I think I'd feel more pressure if I didn't know them, because if I did know them, then they'd know that I was just going to come up there and talk shit for thirty minutes. Right? <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be like, "Oh, that's See, just they would Brian. think that of me. Yeah. They'd be expecting me to know what I was talking about. That's true. If they were <laughs> me, they were like, oh, "We better fact check all yeah, of this." Exactly. <laughs> and, and think about me. I go on stage and shove food in my face for money. Do you think this is going to make a problem? Yeah, that's life? true. That's yeah. true. Will, you're, Will you're says this is the least embarrassing thing I'm going to do this year. <laughs> you know what? You know, I, for me, this one is like a negative cost thing because a hundred bucks is nice, but it's not going to get me out of bed. So I'm thinking a thousand just to get me to there go there. Go. Hey, there you go. Yeah, we got to think about what's going to motivate right. us. Like a hundred bucks to me is, you know, yeah, how much I've made my entire podcasting career. Yeah. Like, it's not going to motivate <laughs> Maybe to do shit. Okay, here's one. Base jump off a tall building. Base jump off a tall building. Yeah, so we're not talking about parachuting out of a out of an airplane where there's a nice you know soft field to land in. We're talking about base jumping off a building in the middle of a city, and you got seconds to throw your parachute. Whoa! I'll answer first. I'm out. Yeah, you're out. Okay. You, are you afraid I'm of heights? Out. Uh, I'm afraid of heights and large plus gravity equals splat. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so, uh, okay, yeah, I'm with you. I don't trust the parachute for my weight no. limit. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, listen, I don't. Uh, there, I probably wouldn't have a challenge with the weight limit, but I am horrified of heights. Horrified. So I think you'd probably have to give me. It'd probably have to be at least a hundred thousand dollars, but I'm thinking more like a million. Yeah. I'm thinking a million dollars would get me because I don't even know that my body would physically it's allow go me. Up when you're standing up on top. Oh of that yeah, 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 for too. sure. I'm gonna be like, wait, can I renegotiate? <laughs> hey, I... magic man, making these offers. Can I renegotiate? Yes. See, I'm a bit more of a daredevil. I love crazy roller coasters and heights and stuff like that. Okay. I'm adrenaline junkie. Okay. So I probably, yeah, I would probably do it for like, uh, I mean, 10 seems low if I lost my life. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to think about it. Oh, that's your value. You know, I, mean, I would say I would probably do it for $10,000, but. Uh. Jeff's like, bitch, you left me with $10,000. <laughs> that bitch. I'll give you $10,000 for a 10% stake in your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go to ABC. Uh, they take ownership. <laughs> you're right. Okay. So for you, it's it's little. It's, it's a thousand lower. bucks. No, it's not a thousand. 10,000. That's what I was saying. 10,000. Okay. 10, I would do it, but that seems low then if I lost my life. Yeah, it, that's so, going to be very low if you yeah. lose your life because, you know, Jeff's going to have to pay for the funeral. That $10,000 is going to be gone. <laughs> Where's he going to get the strippers and coke? <laughs> 
because that's uh, the kind of party we're going to throw. Yeah. All right, here's one. Hookers and blow. Hookers and strippers. <laughs> How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12 1 2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving. Plus, high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10. H-E-R-O dot C-O. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12 1 2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. Okay, here's one. How much, how many zeros to marry a roller coaster <laughs> and no one else knows about it and you have to stay married for a year? You have to pretend that you're in love with a roller coaster for a year. How many zeros? I mean, I'm confused and the no one else knows about it. No one else. In other words. Yeah, what does that entail? Okay, so here it is. Ready? Watch. I come up to you and I say, how many zeros <laughs> to go marry that roller coaster? And uh-huh. you have to be, you have to pretend like you're in love with that roller coaster to the okay. point, just like those ladies on oh, the, the episode show. we reviewed, right? Yeah. You have to pretend, but you cannot let anybody else in on the joke. You cannot let anybody else know that you're being paid to do this. Okay. You uh... just have to go around. You have to go with it for an entire year. And if you tell anybody, I'm taking the money away. That's a million dollars for me. Million it, dollars. It's too hard to keep up a charade for a fucking year. Yeah, it's hard. That's coaster. part of that's part of the question, right? <laughs> is how long can you keep the joke going, right? I don't think I could get through it. Yeah, I, yeah. that's the thing. I don't think I could get through it I either. I don't think I could get through but it. But if I could, but the do effort it. wouldn't be the worth the money because I think it's a ninety nine percent a fail. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This is a hard one, but I think if I could get through it, that an extra hundred thousand dollars in my pocket. Just to pretend like I'm married to a roller coaster is not a bad idea. Oh, for sure. It's better than base That's jumping. That's what I'm going with yeah. a million. Yeah. It's better than base jumping. Mm-hmm. That's okay. good logic. Spend three nights in the Florida swamp with only the clothes on your back. Oof. So the Okie Fanoki, which is famous, by the way. Oh, will you, <laughs> live the in New- you live in New York, the Everglades. Which, uh, yeah, the Everglades, which is yeah. famous for gators, mm-hmm. snakes, and all kind of things that can kill you. Actually, that guy, who's the guy who runs around uh, doing all the, ch- man, what's his name? Um, the guy who does all of the survivalist shows. Yeah, who would you know, Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls said, and the guy, the alligator guy from Australia, or the the crocodile hunter, what was his name? Right. Uh, you know, Irwin. Talking, you know, Irwin, Steve yeah. Irwin, that's right. Steve Irwin <laughs> and Bear Grylls both said that the most dangerous place that they've ever visited, the place where they had to survive, was the swamp. The swamp. The swamp in Florida, mm. right? So the Everglades were their mo that was the thing that they feared the most. Was not being out, you know, wherever in the Sahara Desert or any of those places. Mm-hmm. It was the swamp. And let me tell you, since I was just there a couple weeks ago, in the middle of the swamp taking one of those airboat rides, there is an there is a gator or a crocodile. Everywhere you turn, they are everywhere. They are huge. They have their mouths open. They're ready for you. You're delicious. You're <laughs> delicious, and they you. want you. You know the thing I would be scared of the most is the freaking mosquitoes. They 
eat they would eat me alive based on last weekend by the pool. <laughs> based on your previous <laughs> history with the mosquitoes. I mean, they can't it is it's yeah. craziness. I think you have to give me a million dollars yeah, to do I'm this. Going with a million. I think you have to give me a million dollars yes. to do this. What about you, Will? Give me a million dollars and film me and make it a reality show. Yep, yeah. that's what I say. Yes. I say give me a million dollars and we'll make money off of the licensing rights. Yep. Okay, now spend one night on Mount Everest. Hmm. One night on Mount Everest. Now remember you're in the death zone. Above 12,000 feet, you're cold, it's chilly, it's stormy, you have oxygen, but you must spend the night up there where in, and not even experienced climbers feel like it's a great place to spend the night. They do, but they don't, they don't like it. <laughs> Your body basically does, deteriorating as soon as you get up does there. Does my fat ass have to climb or are you just dropping yeah. me? I'll, dro- I'll drop you off. We'll drop you off. You're air dropping right. us in yeah, there? Yeah, I'll air drop you right to 28,000 feet. I mean, do we have more? <laughs> 24 hours? 24 hours. You got to be up there. Do we have all the equipment that we would normally have, like a tent and, I would the, say and the warm you, clothes? You have stuff? enough equipment that under normal circumstances <laughs> are likely to get you through the night. But it, since it's Mount Everest, you just never know, right? Okay. But you have a tent to protect you from the wind. You're wearing clothing that's appropriate and you have oxygen. I hate, to be, cold. I hate, I hate to, be to be cold too. I hate it, hate it, mm-hmm. hate it. Unless it's at hate night it. while I'm sleeping. Yeah, that's then. true. And I like to- <laughs> I can never get it cold enough. Me neither. I can't. I swear to God. And especially not in the summer. I turn it down to 66. Yeah. And I yep. can never get it under 68 because yeah. my air conditioner just doesn't won't work that hard. <laughs> um, I would say that this one, I might need $10 million to do this because mm. first of all, I'm afraid of heights. Second of all, I hate to be cold. Third of all, I've watched a lot of documentaries on Mount Everest, and that shit is scary. Those yeah. people are those people are have fucking balls of steel to go up that high and try and survive. It's crazy. Your body's basically deteriorating the second you get up there. You can only spend 24 hours in the death zone. Okay. But to do it, I would have to get $10, $10 million. $10 million. That's my number. What's your number? Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, two million. Two million. If, you, if you're just over top and beyond, in, I think I could make it for 24 hours. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll go five because I feel like I have a lot. Of, my body has enough to feed off of and keep me warm. <laughs> you've got some. <laughs> you've got some extra insulation. Yeah. So you bundle my ass up in a couple of you know yeah. whatever XL jackets I need. I'll yeah. be good. Yeah. Okay. A couple All of right. North Faces. <laughs> okay. Some All right. Columbia pants. <laughs> <laughs> Some Under Armour. <laughs> All right. Okay. We have two more. All right. Well, I mean, we have a million more, but we have two more. Okay. To, two more in this episode. Okay. Ready? Fly and land a plane using only air traffic controller help. So, in other words, pilot dies while you're up in the air in one of these little tiny planes. Pilot just passes out right there, which is, by, which is, by the do way. Do you have the inflatable co-pilot? Happened. You like have the, inf- yes, <laughs> on airplane. airplane. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but he's not much help because you're he right. can't actually do anything. Okay, okay so it make, if it makes you feel comfortable, bring the inflatable. <laughs> but pilot passes out, which, by the way, this has happened. There is tape of this happening. A, a guy was up in a plane with a private pilot, and the pilot died. Oh my and he didn't God. know how to fly a plane. And so the air traffic control talked him down. Wow. Now, they crashed when he landed, but they survived, right? Yeah. Um, but th- now, re- mind you, I've done this. I've flown planes before. Yes. Landing is the have. hard part. Taking off is easy. Landing is the hard part. Right. Flying is easy. It's just like yeah. a car. You just got to turn <laughs> the wheel, right? As long as you can keep your nose up, then you're good. But you only have air traffic control to help you. Mm. Yeah, but this is like a fantasy of mine. Like, <laughs> this is like being at the concert and they need the drummer and you're the guy, you know? Like. <laughs> Pull in, Will! Yeah. Pull in, Will! You know, when I first started learning how to fly, Will, I got to admit that the couple times that I actually got on a commercial airliner, in my head I was like, if they need somebody, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have oh, no yeah. idea. Should I, should I alert the pilot that yeah. I know how to fly? Yeah. I would often talk. I would often talk loudly, like... Well, we're going to take off now, which means they're probably going to push the throttle up to 40. They're going to, uh, you know, I would start talking like I'm a pilot, right? Just to let other you people know. You see this button right here? Yeah. I got my wings. <laughs> I've flown twice. <laughs> I, I'm still here to talk about it. I would I've say, got five hours of flight time, buddy. <laughs> I do. That's it. You know, I've uh, no 32 hours of flight time, um, which uh, you need like 4,000 to even become a pilot. But yeah. anyway. I would probably say I need at least $10,000 because I do understand. And I had an instructor with me every single time that could take control. He never did, but he could take control if he needed to. And just that fact made me feel comfortable yeah. to listen to instruction and do the myriad of complicated things you need to do to get the plane down on the ground and stop it safely. So I would say at least $10,000, probably more like fifty dollars or a hundred. dollars 
uh, to do this because I know it's a complicated thing to do. Do you have anybody else in the plane? No, with you? it's you and the pilot who's it's dead. Not a, <laughs> it's not a Delta flight. No, not seven forty seven. No, no okay. because those things basically land themselves, right? Yeah. I think. I. Th- no, they they actually don't anymore. No, I, they, they don't do the automatic landing on the. I know they don't, right? Mm-hmm. But they could if they needed to. The yeah, technology was to. there. Yeah. So I would say probably fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna take go this, fifty. Yeah. Well, what about you? You like uh, you you like the idea of flying? Have you ever thought about being a pilot, even though you're scared of heights? No, no. Yeah. But you know, in your head, you know, you have those little kid fantasies of things that you would like to experience. Yep. Um, I'm one of those people that I feel my dreams pretty, uh, pretty, uh, hard. So like I'll, I'll wake up having done something, but I feel like I've had the experience. So ah, yeah, yeah. I, nice. I'm like one of those, you know, people. So I, I would, I would like to do it in a fun, like fantasy situation, but I would probably go with the Chrissy logic of, well, there's a chance I'm going to die. So what would my family have? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I would, I would probably go out with like a five million on that one. Okay, yeah. five million dollars. I'm at a hundred thousand dollars. Chrissy's at fifty thousand. Well, you, you said you said I said 10. fifty. I said fifty to a hundred. Hey, is what you I said. said. Ten first. Did I? Okay, I'll go five thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It changes every minute. The more that I think about yeah. it, the more expensive it gets. Okay. All right. One more question, and then we're running out of time for today. But, Will, okay. we'd love to have you back another time. Yeah, this has been so yeah, fun. We encourage, no we encourage everybody to uh, send us a text message if you'd like to be on an episode of The Commercial Break. 470-584-8449. Standard text messaging rates do apply to those of you outside of the continental United States. If you'd like to be on a future episode, please make sure you text us. We'll tell you a time to call in. William's our first phone call guest. And I think it's yeah. been a lot of fun. Here's the final question. How many wait, zeros? Wait, and, and, wait, yeah. Let me throw this in. Go. And like Howard Stern had the whack pack, we could have the grundle sack pack. I yes, love it. I love the it. Grundle Very sack nice. Pack. Very nice. The <laughs> scrundle sack pack is coming. So, William, you're our first member of the scrundle sack pack. There yes. you go. Uh, okay. Our final question on how many zeros. The final question on how many zeros is <laughs> how many zeros to bring a sex doll to Thanksgiving dinner as your oh. date? And you can tell no one. You have to pretend as if it's real. Like a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Whatever. My family would be like, yeah, my, that's funny. Yeah. I'd actually probably, uh, actually, I think I'm going to do it do anyway. Do you want a plate yeah. for? <laughs> would, yeah. Would Bob him? like a plate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Bob's got a raging heart on. <laughs> yeah. I'm really like, what's Chrissy doing now? Yeah, what's that's Chrissy fine. doing? But he's got a big cock. <laughs> yeah. How many? Will, could you pass your girlfriend, please? Yeah, Jeff would probably get in on it, too. He'd be in on the joke. He'd love it. Actually, we should do this and film it. I should yeah. bring a sex doll to my family find my family dinner. I bet my family would be like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. He met Mark Cuban. Yeah. It all went downhill from there. I was going to say, I'll do it for free just for the lull. Yeah, oh, my God. I would exactly. love to do it. All right. Well, Will from Brooklyn. Will the Thrill. I really appreciate Will it. Thank you. Thrill. Will the Thrill. That's, That's my great. new name. Will the Thrill oh, no. from Brooklyn. Big Will the Champ. Big Big Will, Will the Champ. Champ. I have a brand I'm trying to build here. Okay. okay. Big Will the Champ. Thank Big you very Will much. Champ. <laughs> for joining us today. You're a super fan. We love you very much, and we appreciate yes. uh, every time that you communicate with us, and thanks for coming on today on to the commercial break. So we'll talk to you a little bit later, Will. Thanks so much. Thank you. Anytime, brother. Okay. Anytime, Chrissy. Yay. Oh, so nice to, to talk to you. Best to and you. Best to you. Best to you, Big Will. Best to you. Okay, that was Will. Uh, so nice to have him on. That was, was very amazing. nice of him to call in and talk yeah. to us for a little while. It was I, fun to have interaction. Yeah, I actually, I, I'd spoken with Will a few times via email. He'd actually sent in some ideas uh, about content. Yeah, for yeah. shows. And I and we used one or two of them. Um, and it was good. Like, he's, yeah. he's got the idea of the show. He understands he understands the my vibe. sick and twisted comedy sense <laughs> and how, uh, how much we like it. So I yes. really, really appreciate it. And, um, okay, so I don't know what else we can do. What else do you want to do today? I think that's it. You think that's it? Now. Yeah, now we've got to go when we got to do more recording. You know what I'm saying? We do. we got to go when we got to talk to some other people. Mm-hmm. And, and, we do. I, I just got to say. <laughs> can I just say this? <laughs> can I just say the following? Sure. I'm not sure I really want to do this. I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <sighs> dun, 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 I can't wait dun, to tell dun, the story dun, in dun, full. Dun, 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 dun. About what we're about to do. Yeah, well, let's keep yeah. it under wraps right now. Yeah, I'll keep it under wraps for right yeah. now. I don't want to make it sound like, you know. <laughs> hey, it could be fun. We don't know. It could be fun. You never we don't know. know. Again, but let's just say this. Look, yeah, go ahead. Can you pay me $1,000 to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on five zeros behind this yeah. one. <laughs> It just doesn't feel fun to me. Yeah. It already feels like a struggle. You know I what I'm know, saying? But then, then that's when sometimes things are good. Yeah, you know, that's when you true. have like super low expectations. We do have super low expectations. And then you go into it and you're like, well, actually, that was good. That's true. You know what? That's true. Yeah. I shouldn't. 
I shouldn't color this a bad situation yeah. before we even know what we're getting ourselves into. Yeah. So let's just he, go with it. Yeah, we'll go with it. And I'll just I'll say this. I'll just put Roll a roll with it like water. I'll explain what we're talking about just a little bit. Sometimes when you're in this podcast universe, you get asked to do some things by other podcasters. And as much as you, you know, you do so much recording anyway, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't want to go do more recording for somebody else's program. But at the end of the day, you also don't want to be a dick, right? So I'll just be a dick without actually saying the name. So I'll just be a dick yeah, right now. Yeah, it could be great. It could be great. could be great. You yes. never know. Okay. www.tcbpodcast.com is where you go. You can read all the show notes, find out more about Chrissy and I, listen to all the audio, watch all the video. And if you're so inclined and you want to get involved in the next contest we're running, go to youtube.com slash the commercial break. Watch all the episodes all the way through from episode number 85 on... And if you're writing down all the clues that are hidden somewhere in the video, that's all I'm going to say, then you'll be able to answer the question when I ask it in a couple of weeks. And when I ask it, then you'll write in, you'll give us the answer. And if you're correct, you'll be entered in to win our next big prize. Last time it was $500 in gold dot gift cards. I'm saying that because I want you to know that we don't, we don't run cheap on the contest here. No. We want you to, when you win, we want you to win. I'm not going to give you a fucking mug or something like that. It's going to be good stuff, right? Yeah. But if you want a mug, write us, info at tcbpodcast.com. Tell us your show ideas. If you got a good story or an interesting thing to, to tell us, we'd be happy to listen. And who knows? We might put it on air. 470-584-8449. Text us if you'd like to be on a future episode of The Commercial Break. Or uh, you can leave us a voicemail. Mm-hmm. And make sure you say best to you because we might put it on air. Even if you don't like us, just say best to you. Or yeah, it's Best fun. the fuck to you or whatever you want to say. <laughs> yeah. Say it and we'll put it on air at some point during the episodes. Yeah. Also, Fireside Chat. Download it now. Chrissy and I are recording live on Fireside Chat at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Go to our Instagram. Follow us there because that's when you'll be notified about when all of the... Actually, if you go on the Fireside app and you follow us, you'll get notified about when we schedule events. Exactly. So either way, follow us on Instagram. Put it on Instagram and Fireside. Yeah. Okay. So what else can we do today? I think that's it, Brian. Okay, so this is how it goes. I love you, Chrissy. I love you, Brian. Best to you, Chrissy. Best to you, Brian. Best to William for joining us today. Best and to you, best big, big, big Will. Big Will the champ. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Yes. Until next time, we must say bye. bye. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. The commercial break. New episodes on Tuesdays and now Fridays. New YouTube clips drop daily at youtube.com slash the commercial break. Visit tcbpodcast.com for access to our entire media library. Follow us at The Commercial Break on Instagram. Each episode is written and produced by Brian Green, co-hosted by Chrissy Hoadley, with additional content provided by Tina Cano.
How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings.